Hi guys, and Stocky here for Refine Life Coaching. I um, am here today to talk a little bit about creatives and the creative brain and why I really, really like creatives and why I really love your creative brain. So most of you know that I'm a business money and life coach and that means that I help people in their business and I help people with their relationship with money and I help people with some life stuff too. So I coach in three different areas. I spend a lot of my time though with um, clients who are creatives and so um, gosh I, I just love creatives. I love talking to them. I love what they're doing. I, I am one, so I kind of get them. Um, I love the topics that we talk about. I like what they're starting. I like what they're finishing. Um, I'm really familiar with some of the um, kind of hurdles that they have to jump through and jump over to get where they really want to go. And so I just really connect with them. I love creatives. So today is really for the creatives, and I'm going to talk to you guys about why I love your creative brain. Uh, so I'm coming to you from the great state of Minnesota where the kids just went back to school and my house is so awesomely quiet right now. I have three boys and the three boys, God love them, three months, three boys in the house, in and out the whole summer. So I'm really excited to have the house back and school to start. So um, I kind of feel like I can conquer the world and as a creative you might um, know that we really love our quiet time. We love having some really good quiet time. So um, I don't know. Who, who knows what will come of the next couple days because ooh, the kids are not here and it is nice and quiet. So today's chat really is for people who identify as creatives. Of course, please watch if you want to learn about creatives and what is um, really common to a, a big bulk of the group of creatives that I work with. Um, I, I just kind of want to dive right in if that's okay with you guys. Um, first of all, I'll say creatives sometimes can get a bad rap. There are some stereotypes about creatives that aren't always super flattering. And, oh, I am just here to change that. I'm just here to change that. So um, a couple things that are, um, I don't know, said sometimes about creative people if you ask them the outside of our industry, outside of the creative industry, hey, like, what is a typical creative to you? They might say things like, well, um, the creatives I know are sometimes, you know, not very focused. They um, might be kind of flighty. They're a little bit more emotional. It seems like they're a little deeper than, you know, normal. That's another thing that is, is sometimes said. Um, I, get, I get the disorganized sometimes. Um, Maybe like if my if my family or my my um I don't know maybe if my brother he's like well maybe they're disorganized I don't know um, head in the clouds is another one and so those are just some kind of stereotypical things about creatives that are I don't know I'd say kind of have negative connotations and I want to just start by um, maybe reframing those for you guys in case you've ever felt like that's um, you or maybe you've been described that way. Um, because oh, I am I am ready. I am ready to um, refute those <laughs> those words. So instead of um, considering a creative flighty or unfocused, I am more likely to think um, that creatives are more sensitive to external stimuli than other people. Right? They're a little bit more sensitive. They can see things differently. They can feel things differently. They can maybe feel things on an intuitive level that other people just, they got nothing. They have no idea that that energy is even in the air. So um, flighty or unfocused could be changed to, wow, really um, quite sensitive to stimuli in a really positive way. And sometimes they're drawn to distractions. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that. My husband and I walk the dog, Lewis, who's back there laying down at the end of the day, and we'll be talking. And, you know, my brain is often working on like creating, building, making. And I can shut it off, but sometimes we'll go for a walk and I'll see something and be like, hmm. And all of a sudden they'll go inside and it'll kind of click and it'll start to move around a little. And Chris will be talking and I'm like, whoa, whoa, stop for a minute. 
my brain has just shifted into creative brain, right? So I'm not really able to listen to what you're saying. So just give me a second because my brain has switched into this space where it's trying to solve a problem or it's trying to connect something that it just saw that might be helpful for project A, B, C, or D, whatever is going on, whatever's going on at the time in here. And so um, I would love to say that that's kind of a gift. It's more of like a, a pattern, an ability to see patterns and see connections where other people might not see them. And when this happens, um, I am able to, and, and I've, I mean other creatives too, but when this happens, we are able to like make something click and then something will move forward. Almost like you're sticking um, something into a gear or a keyhole and all of a sudden, Mer! okay, we can move forward with that. We just solved that problem. So, um, so sometimes it appears that we are not paying attention or um, we're not really like focused on whatever it is that's happening. But really, there is this is a powerful brain. Creative brains are so powerful. And um, sometimes when the wave of creativity comes, it's hard to stop it. So you, um, you end up seeming unfocused or flighty. But really, it's just your superpower, which is quickly switched into action. And if you can... Um, if you can recognize it, then you can help people around you um, respond to it instead of thinking that you're flighty or unfocused. Maybe you could say, oh my gosh, creative brain just started happening. Um, give me a second and I'll be right back with you. I will say I probably have to do that once a week. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. I think it's a good thing. Um, when we see a solution, it can just stop us in the middle of the street. Okay, sometimes people say that we're a little bit more emotional. I would agree. I can remember being um, in 10th grade. My parents wanted me to break up with my boyfriend. They just didn't think he was right for me. And so um, I remember to the core of my soul, I remember exactly where I was. I was laying on my bed. I was crying and crying. I had this peach comforter, peach paisley comforter. I mean, I remember it to a T. And I remember thinking, I am... I feel so much more deeply than other people. Is there anyone that could ever feel as deeply as I feel about these topics? And so um, that was really one of my first times kind of thinking, I think I feel differently than other people. I think I feel um, perhaps on a deeper level. And as my life's gone on, I realized, yeah, I think, I think that I might. And as I've gotten to be 45 and older, um, and I've really studied creatives, and I've studied intuition, and um, kind of studied their sensitivity um i really have come to the conclusion conclusion like yeah actually that is that really is a thing and i mean studies have shown creatives are um a little bit more intuitive we feel a little bit more deeply we're you know more a little bit more sensitive on a whole as a whole okay so instead of emotional with a negative connotation i'm gonna say hey actually we're able to connect with the core of our soul real quick which is awesome um, we kind of know like our yeses and nos, right? We know what we're going to say yes to and we know what we're going to say no to because we can really connect quickly with what is meaningful to us. So um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that a win. I'm going to call that a gift and um, I hope you guys do too. Also, we're probably more inclined to truly like feel and process our emotions as opposed to stuffing your emotions like somewhere inside your body and letting them stay there for a long time and I don't know if you guys know, but studies have shown that that can actually bring about harmful health consequences. So um, really processing your emotions and being in touch with them is actually so healthy. So yay, creatives. Thank you. Um, okay, sometimes people will say, well, it seems a little disorganized. Like a good example is my family knows I don't really answer my phone. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't really want to answer my phone. I don't think I'm disorganized as a result of it. I think I'm really super focused on some other stuff. So um, sometimes disorganized is a way that creatives are described. The other thing with that particular connotation is we often have multiple projects going at one time. We're not just working on one thing. We're working on about eight. They're all in a different phase of completion. And um, I will say there are always spaces in our life like whether they're physical spaces or mental spaces that we keep clear and streamlined and clean right because that's really helpful to us but there are some places that are just gonna be messy and um, what I will say also about art 
in general is it gets messy before it gets beautiful. A good example is the flower shop. So I used to own a flower shop for about 16 years. And um, whew, if you came in the back room, you'd be like, what in the heck is going on back here? Did a bomb go off? I mean, flowers all over, stems flying, music playing, people chatting, um, garbage is all over, boxes all over, vases, water. I mean, you need so many things to create the product that we were creating that um, whew, it's a mess. And other people be like, it is not organized in here. Oh my gosh, we knew where every single thing was and where every single thing was going. So um, artists have a really good way, creative people have a really good way of um, creating gorgeousness, beauty, a product that is amazing, a result. They create it out of chaos and it is a superpower for them. So I go back to like, hmm, am I disorganized or is this part of the process that makes um, my product amazing? Because when the people would come and get the flowers, they would be like, oh my gosh, so great. If they saw the back room, they'd be like, how could something so beautiful come from this? Woo, this is a mess. So um, anyway, I want you to think about it. I want you to start thinking differently about your creativity. Um, this last little one I kind of want to refute, this little thought is, hey, creatives, your head is in the clouds. Oh, my gosh. Seriously, I want to go on Oprah and talk about this. For sure our head is in the clouds. That is where you want our heads to be because when we are um, seemingly head in the clouds or in that space, we are solving problems. We are using our imaginative part of our brain to create a solution, usually for a problem that we see, whether it's an artistic problem, whether it's a programming problem, whether it's, um, I don't know, an opportunity to make our garden more amazing, or whether it's a way to um, solve the water crisis in Africa. I mean, you want our head in the clouds. You want us to be doing the deep thinking because when people do the deep thinking is when they're making these amazing connections that actually change the world. So don't even get me started because I'm starting to feel kind of emotional about it, but I'm going to call it problem solving. I'm going to call it deep thinking and spending time in an imaginative problem solving space. Okay. So, um, head in the clouds. Oh, bring it. My head is in the clouds all the time. And I am solving all sorts of problems. I am creating all sorts of amazing things that are going to change the world when my head is in the clouds. The um, creatives are really naturally um, curious, right? They're curious about how things work and how could they actually make them better. They see opportunities everywhere. And so what a great person to be doing the deep thinking, right? If if you have somebody who's super good at making connections, seeing things all over, seeing possibility everywhere, whew, that's who you want doing the deep thinking, the creatives. Okay, so let me, I'm looking at my notes, you guys. Yeah, I wrote, you want our head in the clouds. It's where we make all the stuff that's going to save the world. I really, truly believe this. Oprah, I'll come and talk about it on your show. Okay. So here's the five things that I love about your creative brain because oh, I love creatives. I just love them. So number one, your, um, your passion. See, guys, I made flashcards again for you. Passion, yay. Your passion is really like no other. I mean, this is something that really drives you to create and make and build and do and solve problems. So you have like a high level of passion. I think this goes back to really feeling deeply. So um, also, which is really fascinating is, Lots of creatives are multi-passionate. For example, you'll be making jewelry. Let's say you're making jewelry. And you're sitting there with your little jewelry making stuff. And um, you're like, gosh, I like this jewelry making, but what I really want to do is be cooking. That's what I want to do. Oh, I love that people are saying stuff right now. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt. Organized mess, yes. And yes, head in the clouds and no borders on this. Yeah. Sorry, um, people are commenting on the side, and I just love that. Um, Okay, so multi-passionate. You guys are multi-passionate. When you're making jewelry, you're thinking, oh, actually, um, I should be cooking this amazing meal with all these amazing things, and here's how I'm going to do it, and here's what's going to happen. And then when you're cooking, you're thinking, you know, I really should get my knitting out. I want to create a gorgeous scarf and give it to so-and-so or put it on with my blankety-blank shirt or whatever. Um, or you might be knitting, and you might be thinking, Gosh, what I really want to do is create some brand new, like, computer programming that is going to do blankety-blank-blank, blank, and 
I can see how gorgeous and amazing it would be and what a great result it would create for my clients or for the world or whatever. So oftentimes um, creatives have many uh, different passions and um, it sometimes makes it hard for us to really focus on one. So that's one of the you know things creatives deal with is okay what is my priority what am I going to focus on now, so um, okay next thing, yeah happiness for us okay, the other thing about your passion is that I know one thing about creatives is that the product you make the product you create whether it is um, a book or a, or music or a play or you know acting. Um, or a flower arrangement or jewelry. I'm just trying to think of some of the people that follow me on Instagram. What are they all doing? Um, or a maker, if you're a maker of something. What I know about creatives is that they put their stuff out into the world and it is really meaningful to them and they want you to receive it as it was intended. So here's an example. Again, I go back to the flower shop just because it's kind of a beautiful little place to talk about. Um, a client would come in and say, oh, this thing has happened and I need you to create an arrangement that says gentle, soft, kind, loving, caring, like big hug. And then um, maybe, and, and maybe they'll say, and I kind of feel peach about it or I feel cream about it or whatever it is. And so then we're like, oh my gosh, bring it on, let's go. And so then we take all of our, um, we take all of our flowers, we go into the back cooler and we look, we look for different things. Like I would look for some porcelain type roses, like roses that had really beautiful edges, maybe just two of them. And then I would get some, um, I would probably get some dahlias. I would probably get some hydrangea, probably in like creams. I'd probably get some stock that was like a light, light, light peach color. I'd probably get some ranunculus. Like, okay, so these, these are the flowers that I would use, right? And I would put them kind of in this low chubby arrangement and I'd have some things moving around around them. Um, and w when I gave it to the client, I would say, I, all I would be thinking is, oh, this is just, this is gentle. Is that this is so soft? The texture is just right. It says kind. It really is a kind bouquet, and it's loving, and it is just gonna hug this person, right? So, as an artist, I spend a whole lot of time in that space of whatever product I'm creating. I just want this person who's picking it up to love it so much that when they give it to whoever it is that needs the kindness and the love, they just feel so good about it, right? And so the client would come in. And we would give it to them and we would say, oh my gosh. They would say, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. Maybe they'd have tears in their eyes. And you're, as a florist, as a, as a designer, you're just like, we win. We win the day. We win. Totally amazing. Okay, this is all we need. That is all we need. Like That would fulfill my creative soul and my creative heart if I could do that for somebody. And so um, other creatives, I have learned, feel the same. Like That is what is super important to a creative especially a baby creative, like a beginner creative, like maybe you've had your shop or your business or whatever it is for, um, for a couple years. And as you go on, different things become important. But in the beginning, the product and the reaction your product gets, that is, that is where your heart and soul lives. So if you're creative, um, I want you to know I love your passion. I love it. It's so amazing. Again, gonna gonna just save the world. It's gonna save the world. Okay, um, number two, here's the other thing that you guys have. Oh my gosh, you have this big time. I don't know if you know that you have this, but ooh, vision. Your vision is amazing. You guys can see things that no one else can see. Like other people can't see them. They do not have this gift. This is a major gift of creatives, okay? Especially maverick creatives. Maybe we'll talk about maverick creatives sometime. Um, not today though. Okay. Uh, things are clear to you in your head and you can see them. If you're a visual, you can see them. If you are an auditory creative, you can hear them be you and you can create them in your head before anyone else even catches on that you're doing it. It's pretty remarkable. The ability of your brain to work that way. And so you can create something, right? Let's okay. Let's just say, Let's say in my head, let's say I'm going to create um, a, a huge event 
right? I can see it. I can see the font we're using. I can see the color palette. I can see everything. And I can work with it in my head while it's there. I can take the vision and I can play with it a little and refine it. I can make it better before I even execute it on it. So, oh my gosh, do you know how awesome I feel about your vision, your ability to envision something in the future, something coming together? I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Um, okay, yes, ability. Again, it's change the world stuff. That is how we change the world. And I have a really good example of that. Oh, I have a great example of that coming up, okay? So my next one is number three, three out of five, so we don't have much longer to go if you're, like, running, running low on time. Um, Number three, you are a problem solver. Oh my gosh, you can see something and you can fix it. And almost like MacGyver, you can just be like, okay, well, we can try this. Oh, that, oh, is that problem over there? Okay, we can try this. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna get some chewing gum and a pen and a Band-Aid and then it's, it, we're, we're gonna be able to call Africa. It's gonna be fine. So your ability to think differently when you are presented with a problem is so powerful. It's amazing. and. Oh, the creatives. Seriously, you guys rule the world. Also, another way to look at it is you absolutely make lemons out of lemonade. Like if something bad happens, you have like 20 other ideas up your sleeve so you can get it sorted out and get yourself fulfilled and get what you need. It's not like being presented with a problem is a problem for you. It's actually this amazing opportunity to exercise your ability to solve the problem and be creative. So I love that about you guys. Um, another thing that happens is I'm looking at my notes. You guys know I like to have notes. Oh, the other thing that's kind of maybe not great that happens as a result of this is because you guys can see how you can fix everything. Sometimes you get, here's where we get the little unfocused fit, right? Like you could fix all the problems. You could fix all that, all of that, all the words, all the art, all of the, whatever is wrong. And Sometimes you get um, distracted and then you're like, whoa, whoa, I don't even know what I'm doing. Is this what I want to be doing? I don't know if I should be doing this. What I really was going to be doing was over here, but then I saw this problem and I thought I could fix it. And I didn't think it was going to take me this long, but it's a good problem to fix. So you can see how you get kind of distracted by that. So that is something that uh, in coaching we work on kind of like harnessing the power of your brain. You're super creative, very powerful very magical brain and um we help you just become a little bit more disciplined and focused and priority and results focused so um i do love that about creative creatives but also there's sometimes um a little negative that comes with that but the bottom line is it's amazing okay the other thing you guys do really well is you do solitude really well like Remember, I got kind of was excited at the beginning of my talk about how my sweet ever loving boys are gone out of the house. You guys, it's totally quiet. No one is going to come in. No one is in the basement. No one is yelling. No one is screaming. No one is fighting. <coughs> okay, hold on. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, quiet time. Creatives can do their deep thinking during this quiet time. And they've overcome their fear of being alone. Like that's not a thing for them because they actually love it. It's infilling. <coughs> it's usually a time where they can truly do their best work because they're able to leave the surface of their thinking, right? So an example would be, Okay, I'm at, the, I'm at the coffee shop. Maybe coffee will help. I'm at the coffee shop, and I'm doing, um, let's say I'm just doing my social media. So I work on my social media, and when people come into the coffee shop, I'm like, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? I can pull out really quickly and come back in. I can pull out of my project easily and chat for a minute, and then I can go back in. I'm having a terrible time. Hold on. <coughs> <coughs> But when I'm thinking really deeply and I've kind of gone into a different zone, the zone is almost, um, well, they call it the zone, a place where you can do thinking that creates really big results and shifts because you're, um, you're making connections in a different space in your brain. 
you're creating different neural pathways and um, connecting different things and you really are able to come up with some solutions um, from your insight. And so the point of the story is you guys are really good at doing the deep thinking. And I have a little story about this. I have a client who I love, who I totally love. And she was doing the deep thinking, right? She was doing the writing. She was having the quiet time. She was having the alone time. She was scheduled and ready to go. And then for one reason or another, she wasn't able to do it for a period of time. And she came back to me after that period of time and she said, I just can't do it. I just don't have time to do it. And it feels like what it feels like is when you need a back adjustment and your back is out of alignment. So in coaching, we say, yeah, you're kind of feeling like out of alignment, right? Because you haven't been able to do that deep thinking to connect with that part of yourself. And that for a creative is like, it's required. It's just part of breathing. And if you don't do it, you can feel so stifled and it can feel awful. So you really do like creatives need to have the quiet time. They need to have the deep thinking time. They need to have the, um, the time where they get to go deep without interruption because you know that the interruption, whoa, it drives you crazy. It almost makes you cry. So if you are a creative and you're feeling out of alignment at all, a great thing to do is just to sit two hours, you know, 90 minutes, 90 minutes to two hours, take time without interruption to just dive deep and start writing and writing and writing and writing. I swear at the end of it, it's always a solution. Okay, the fifth thing. Oh, here's my card for that. That was solitude and deep thinking. I love what happens during that. That was the one I just talked about. Okay, last one. Fifth reason, honestly, oh my gosh, life is amazing as a result for me of creatives. We just make life better. Creatives make life better. No question about it. Um, creatives have an ability to reach us at the core of our soul. So usually that's musician, artists, that's the people who are doing plays, it's people who are doing fine art, it's people who are making clothing, making handbags, um, creating you know, some tangible products, but also music, words, poetry, books, right? So these are all things that can touch us at the core of our soul. When we find the right artist, we sometimes follow them, right? So if I see a painting and it resonates with me, um, it might remind me of a certain time or place. Or it might give me just like a warm feeling. I can think of a picture by my friend Allison Johansson. I can think of it now that every time I see it, it's on Instagram, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, it just like feels like my soul is warm. So what a power, what an amazing power that you guys can, that you guys have to create something that connects upon first look with my soul. Pretty awesome. Same thing, wearing a piece of handmade jewelry that just feels really connected to me if you have any jewelry makers that you love. Um, or when I see architecture, like architecture is one piece, it's like humongous art. <clears throat> and I feel like it historically, like I'm thinking of architecture in like England and um, Scotland, the architecture there, it just makes you feel like historical, like you're in a completely different place and the architecture has so much to do with it the art of architecture. Or you guys, when you hear music, when you hear music, oh my gosh, it touches the core of your soul. Certain songs, um, certain places where music is happening. When I see a beautiful handbag that's handmade by, we have lots of leather artisans in, in our town and in Minnesota. And so, gosh, seeing something that you're just like, oh, I love that, that's totally me, that feels great. It's kind of fun. Um, the last one, and this is going to be a good example, is when I read a book. When I read a really good book and the words in the book resonate or the story is amazing or um, the world they create on a page, on a piece of paper, transports me to a different place, makes me feel like I'm in a different world. That is powerful. That is so powerful. So I'm specifically like... One person I, I kind of watched and paid attention to is J.K. Rowling. She um, wrote Harry Potter, right? So her idea about Harry Potter to write this 
came in 1990 when she was on a train from Manchester, I better look, from Manchester to London, right? So she had this idea. She didn't have, a lot of people will resonate with this. She did not have a pen or paper with her. She didn't have a pen or paper, so she had to just hold on to it. I would have been going crazy. Anyway, she then wrote it, right? And so now she wrote the books. They made the movies. It affected millions and millions of people across the world. Brought joy to them, right? Helped um, have helped people start reading again. Helped me start reading again because I had come off of reading. Um, I had come off of. Hold on a second. I'm getting all these dings. Something going on. Nope. Looks like everything's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I had just come off of um, going to grad school and studying, oh my gosh, anatomy and physiology and physics and teaching and all the things I studied. And I didn't really want to read. And then Harry Potter came along and I feel like, oh, this is awesome. And I started reading again and I haven't stopped since then. So it kind of reignited my love for reading. Um, imagine if she didn't execute on her idea. She had a tiny seed of an idea in her head and she just started. And what I saw when I kind of researched it was that she had pen and a big piece of paper and she wrote out um, the plot lines for the books. I mean, that's how it starts, pen and paper, giddy up, or maybe like hand and keyboard. Anyway, how impactful and how moving for me. Um, we went to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in, um, Orlando at Universal Studios. Okay, so my kids were like, oh, um, great, we're gonna go here. They didn't have as much of an attachment as I did, but when I went there, I was looking at it through the eyes of a creative, right, who had so appreciated this like whole story and this thing that she had created from a tiny seed of an idea in her brain. And um, I mean, I had tears in my eyes. I just walked around and the detail with which everything had been really paid attention to was so impactful. I mean, I literally felt like I was in this world. It was amazing. Um, so it's a really good example of how creatives make the world a better place. They make the world a more beautiful place to live. They make connections happen and they can just change the world. So do you see that I really love creatives? <laughs> um, if you have a creative business and you are ready to kind of harness the power of your mind or get clear on some of your priorities or figure out, hey, what are really the next best steps for me in my creative business? I've got a really good tool for you. It's free. Um, it's called the Wheel of Work and it really helps you guys figure out your next best steps. So I'm going to put it in the um, notes here. It's at angstocky.com forward slash wheel dash of dash work. And it's um, specifically for entrepreneurs. And when I created it, I really had creatives in mind because I am one. And um, it's just really helpful. So if you need a little, um, a little boost, if you want to do a little bit of work trying to figure out what's next for you, <clears throat> It's a really good download and you can, you don't have to print it. You can use it from your computer or you can um, print it and spend a couple hours at the coffee shop with it. I promise it's a good one. Okay. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to throw them, throw them in the um, comments. Next week, I am going to talk about four mistakes I made as a baby creative. A baby creative is like, you know, first, second, third, fourth year in, in your business, maybe third year in your business. And um, I'm going to tell you four mistakes that I made that I want you to be aware of. They're um, kind of common to baby creatives, beginner creatives. Um, I hope you're not offended by that term, but, um, you know, younger creatives, newer creatives, because there are, there are all different stages of having a creative business and I call the first one baby creative. Okay, gang, um, I hope you're well. Seeing there are no questions, I um, wish you a really good week. And um, my parting question to you is, 
hey, what would be a good result of the next 90 minutes for you? What would be a good result of the next 90 minutes? Answer that and you'll be focused on whatever's next for you. Bye.